There is a connection to mountains that many of us crave. We seek solace in their grandeur statues. We find stillness from our minds in the music that they play. In the whooshing winds that kiss our face. In the sun that peeks through trees and warms our skin. And here I am. The mountains are calling and I must go. We started our journey from Dehradun. It was a 10 hour drive from Dehradun to Dawla. We were welcomed by the Supin River. The clear turquoise water of Supin was love at first sight for a trekker. On day 2, we gained about 1000 feet to reach Sewa village. Although the trek was long, but it was an easy trail. Here in Sewa, you can explore the famous Kinnar Temple. Every day in the afternoon, we went out for a small accommodation walk nearby. It is kind of routine as you reach a high altitude campsite. It helps your body to get accustomed easily in the Himalayas. On the third day, we reached a village named Bauta after trekking 6 km. The trail was quite moderate. There is a wooden bridge on the way that separates two states, Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh. We trekked along a motorable road and afterwards we had an ascent to finally reach Bauta. Here we had pleasant homestay accommodation. We recharged our electronic equipments. The Himalayan dogs were so friendly and adorable. In our acclimatization walk, we explored a scenic waterfall. Day 4 was a bit difficult than the past two days as we reached Dhaka, the hanging village. We made our way through rain as fumes were emitting from our clothes due to change in temperature. It almost looked like everyone was high. I'm not high. We explored spectacular temples at Jaka. Our friend Pangshul went a little crazy with his stunts. Up to Jhaka will probably have BSNL network, but keep your expectation low. On fifth day, we covered 11 km. But the trail was easy. Mostly, we were accompanied by the gushing Rupin River. We refilled our bottles with the Himalayan water. The greenery all around was mesmerizing. Some members enjoyed music with Desi dance at rush points. We were surprised to explore a cute Himalayan rat. They don't have long tails. We explored snow bridges, which were a bit tricky to walk upon.
We camped at Dhantreya's Thatch, which is at an altitude about 13,000 feet. From here, you will find the astonishing view of the Rupin waterfall. At this campsite, you might face symptoms of acute mountain sickness, commonly termed as AMS. Drinking plenty of water, avoiding sleep at daytime, and keeping your ears open are the few tips that will help you stay away of AMS. Day 6 was full of tricky climbing trail along with snow patches. However, the trek distance is only 4 km. Upper Waterfall is the most scenic campsite in this trek. We clicked a lot of photos on the edge of the mighty waterfall. The wind was strong here and we spent the night with the hope of not getting our tents uprooted. We were also tensed thinking about tomorrow's weather. Oximeter readings were checked thoroughly for all members to ensure everyone had at least 80 reading. We relaxed ourselves by sharing funny stories among us and waited anxiously for the next morning. Day 7 was the D-Day. All of us were excited. We started at around 4.30 in the morning as we wanted to cross the pass as early as possible. The weather at Himalayas becomes harsh quickly as midday approaches. Layering ourselves properly, we gradually moved our feet on thick snow. We were using micro spikes for better grip. After a while, we could see the final ascent of the pass. The pass was very steep to climb. It was a real test of stamina and willpower. At around 8.30 am, we were at the top of Rupin Pass. We were standing at more than 15,000 feet. And the place looked heavenly. The peak offered a marvelous spectacle of the snow-laden mountains. Then came the fun part, sliding our way down. We enjoyed the slide like little kids do. Some of us finally learned to let go of their fear. As we moved further, we learned that the day is going to take us longer than we imagined. We took lunch break after the snow trail ended.
some of the group members preferred short naps to get recharged. We kept ourselves motivated with the thought of having delicious samosas once we reached Rontigat. It was long walk until we finally reached there in the afternoon. On this camp, we started to receive weak BSNL signal. We called up our loved ones and informed that we are not dead yet. Eighth day was the final day of the trek. On the way, we will explore astounding view of Mount Kinnar Koilash. As we made our descent through Sangla village, we finally reached Baswa village along Baswa river where our trek finally ended. Our journey started with the view of the river and it ended with another. enjoyed the video meet my husband Sobhan who actually did the trek in June last year and helped me make this video so what trek you are planning to do next let us know in the comments post your query in the comments below if you seek any advice or info also if you are crazy about Himalayas as much as we are do check out our honeymoon trek in the Himalayas video right here you know what our honeymoon trip was quite cheap actually. Thank God you agreed instead of that Malaysian trip. That means you are simply cutting the budget. No, 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 no. no. You. Yeah, I messed up big time. But don't you worry. Like and share this video as much as possible. And subscribe to her channel. Yeah, please subscribe. Please.